Hello there and welcome back to another review. So when you talk about classic films for me uh, when I was a kid, which I do, I'm trying to mix it up with um, sort of other movies I review on this channel. But when I talk, when I think about classic movies, movies that I remember, movies that I loved as a kid, look no further uh, than The Golden Child um, with Eddie Murphy, which is a film that I've always loved. I've always loved, like with... Um, Saw sort of Big Trouble in Little China. This was another film as a kid. I couldn't stop watching. I absolutely loved this movie. I even at the time I knew it was a daft, stupid, silly movie, but there was just something about it. I don't know what it was, just because it was just so fun and it was just I do not know. But I'm going to be getting into today, uh, today why I just um, love The Golden Child and why I think it's just a great film. I know this film has its fans. If you've never seen it, I think you should definitely, definitely check it out. Um, Made back in 1986, starring Eddie Murphy, obviously, in Charles Dance. Now, this was a film very much sort of in, like I mentioned, but very in line with Big Trouble in Little China vibe in that we had demons, we had sorcery, we had martial arts, we had everything thrown into the mixed bowl uh, just to make an entertaining movie. Special effects, and at the time, such a light-hearted uh, comedic tone running throughout this movie. Despite, you know, demons taking over the world and things like that, there's a real light-heartedness to the movie, and Eddie Murphy, as you would come to expect. A lot of people, when you think classic Eddie Murphy movies, they just go the typical Beverly Hills Cop, The 48 Hours, which are both classic great movies, but to me... In my heart, fondness always just goes to The Golden Child. Don't ask me why, but I'm going to try and explain that today. Um, the film, as I say, it's daft, it's silly and could have only been made in the 80s and this was one of their movies that was, it was usually on, a, I think I saw it around when it was on like 8 or 9 o'clock one evening and when you think, like I said, when I was about 7 years old, you just absolutely lap this stuff up. When you're that young, you're just gone. Like It was one of the movies like I had to see the end before I went to bed, I'd like school the next day and I absolutely loved it. Um, Oddly enough, I think John Carpenter, John Carpenter was even offered to like sort of direct this movie before he done Big Trouble in Little China. I think I think he, or the script did come his way, or he was offered the director's chair or something like that. Um, um, but yeah, I think I think he was involved, or to say he was in talks anyway. Um, and I think it was originally conceived as like a straight talking like mystery filler, like thriller rather than sort of a comedic fantasy movie. Now I know Eddie Murphy himself used this film as a load of crap, and yes, it is. <laughs> but, uh, but watching the watching the film back in the day, I absolutely loved it, and I still do. And I think it's one of them movies they where it's just like you know when you look at a film, it's just like they don't make them like they used to. They don't have like, half as much fun with movies nowadays as they used. To, and that's what the golden child is it's a hell of a lot of fun it really is a lot of fun um not to say the film is a classic but the film is so 80s it's so light-hearted and let's like let's just go along for the ride let's enjoy eddie murphy let's enjoy the fantasy story and the film is just pure escapism and pure entertainment and that to me is what films are meant to be about hence why i have a fondness uh, for this movie Charles Dance, like with Space Truckers, just always seems happy to play these larger-than-life, almost comedic villains. And I absolutely love him for that. Um, but yeah, it was one of their movies where it was getting late and like past my bedtime. And I was like, come on, I just need to see the ending. And there is a lot of charm to Eddie in this movie. He has a much more sweeter side than some of his other vehicles. And some have even said that his character in this is even more suited to him than sort of the Axel Foley character because of that. It's, I mean, that's a matter of debate, obviously. But... Um, his character in this is slightly very different from slightly very doesn't make sense but yeah very different from sort of the Axel Foley character but I have, I have read reviews or people that have commented on this movie and they say he's actually more suited to his character in this um, again that's all up for debate um, the, the great thing is with Chandler is he doesn't take what is happening seriously either like he is doing jokes and one-liners about what is happening all the time and that is a nod sort of to the audience saying don't you take it seriously either just have a good time and that is exactly what you should do with this movie Dance and Murphy uh, Charles Dance and Eddie Murphy play each other off each other really well and to me it's very much if you love Big Trouble in Little China then you're going to love this movie you will absolutely love this movie now the film has taken a lot of flack over the years. Some fans hate it. Some say it's rubbish, like rubbish and best forgotten. And I say, I mean, to me, honestly, I think that's incredibly, incredibly unfair. Um, I think it's worth a second look. And there's so much fun to be had here. And it's so, so, like I say, light-hearted. It really is. Um, 
I can't stress it like stress enough. There is no worry or stress in the movie whatsoever. Kind of film to watch like it's one of them movies to watch if you've had like a long day or like a stressful day. It's one of them movies that you can just put on and you don't have to necessarily sort of pay attention to, but you can just put on and just sort of enjoy and go with it and sort of um, just sort of wind down to. There's no like I say, there's no sort of obligation to this movie. You can just sort of enjoy it. Um, as I say, it's very easy watch. I watched it again recently, and the film still it still has it. Like, if you didn't like this movie, please go give it another chance, as there is so much to be enjoyed here. So 80s, so light-hearted, great villain, Eddie Murphy on five form, fine form. We also get James Hong and Victor Wong here for good measure. And, and though the film is so damn silly, you just have a lot of fun. You just absolutely have a lot of fun with this movie. So one of my all-time favourites, maybe because it's a fantasy film, maybe because it has an Eastern vibe, maybe because Charles Dance, as always, is a great villain, but there is a lot to be enjoyed here. Film opens in Tibet, and notice right away that funky 80s score um, as Charles Dance and his goons approach this monastery in the snow. Already right then, you know it's going to be a fun movie. And I love how his henchmen are so, so, so over the top as well. As I say, it's very comic booky, cartoony and when you think originally this was maybe going to be a very straight mystery thriller which it probably could have been it could have worked that way and I'd imagine if they did remake it that's probably the like the avenue they would take they probably have comedic elements in it but they would probably put a bit more seriousness in terms of what's happening in terms of like a, a kidnapping you know an abduction and things like that I mean there are murders in the movie but they're so sort of glanced across that nothing you don't really have time to sort of digest it before you're sort of on to the next thing um so as i say you know it's going to be a fun movie right away um as i say but with his henchman charles dance they're so over the top and they're like something you would find in an old school like sort of jimmy wang yu kung fu vehicle or something one guy's like a chain whip um Fu, i think his name is or i think it i think he this guy was like the head wheeler in return to oz uh which i reviewed ages ago now but i think he this guy who's got like sort of the chain whip um, I think he was the he I could be totally wrong, but I think I've read somewhere he was one of the wheelers, if not the head wheeler, uh, in return to uh, Oz. But I have to go and check that out. We even have Peter Kwong here from Big Trouble in Little China too. Um, we meet the golden child who can bring dead birds back to life as Charles Dance and his men trash the monastery and sort of attack the monks. Though there is nothing violent in this movie, you're meant to imagine they've all been slaughtered or killed or you know whatever but you don't actually see in the, anything in this movie they kidnap the child in a cage we learn dance can like teleport and all the while we have like this synthesized 80s guitar music playing then we meet eddie murphy right in the city with the montage of him walking around road signs hollywood signs to ann wilson's best man in the world song going on about his day and it's like a totally different movie right when you cut to chandler um from charles dance's character at the start of the monastery and we cut to i say the best man in the world song playing with eddie murphy just going about his daily business and things like that it's like a totally different movie but it's still a happy good place that you're in you know it's like well how are these two things going to be connected but it's as i say it's all just such good fun so I say going back, and it's like a, I say, a totally different movie. And his character play, he plays Chandler Jarrell, and he, he's sort of his job. He finds missing children. So he is looking for this girl, Cheryl Mosley, on a talk show. Have to love when King Nang finds him, and he is like, "Yeah, I love working with children." And he yells at the kids he is playing basketball with to shut up, which I, still makes me laugh even now. He's like, "Yeah, I love working with children." And he just yells at them on top of his voice to one of them to shut up, like, and it just it is t typical, hilarious Eddie Murphy. And she wants him to help him. She wants him uh, his help to find the child and tell him the child will save the world and will be taken to L.A. and saved by a man. Chandler finds Cheryl Mosley dead outside um, this house that has loads of sort of cult symbols. As I say, there is sort of a dark element, depending that you can't look at the film too seriously, but the fact is this girl that Chandler was after, Cheryl Mosley, she sort of was abducted, and like I say, they find her dead as well. So it does have a sort of some dark um, sort of undertones there. Then we have the banging score that kicks in, is such and it's such a happy-go-lucky, have-a-good-time 80s soundtrack that you never really feel the characters are in any peril. And this is one of them films where that's a good thing, because this is a film about having a good time, and then, like I say, just going along for the ride. 
So um, King Nang starts following him as she wants to like sort of recruit him. She says the kid was in the house as they have to keep evil around the child and the same people that killed the girl had the golden child and Chandler finds some blood in some oatmeal at the house. She takes him to James Hong and makes Chandler talk to this mysterious Carla who hides behind a screen and tells him that if they make the child eat blood then they can sort of kill him and that he is like their saviour even though the golden child is actually played by a girl. Um, Carla we learn is like 30 years old and her ancestors were raped by a dragon um like i say very very silly stuff very silly stuff so the baddies have like sort of the golden child surrounded at like a warehouse where the filmmakers make a big deal of this sort of dancing pepsi can doing putting on the rips at, ritz at one point which doesn't it does slow the film down uh, completely um it's almost like you're saying, look at the effects we can do. You're just watching this sort of Pepsi can do this sort of dance, uh, to sort of putting on the Ritz, and it just doesn't advance any, and it goes on way too long, but, you know, whatever. So the golden child sort of projects himself to Chandler, and I love the reaction of her. He, says, <laughs> and he sort of sees the golden child sort of floating in this tree, and he says, like, hey, bird, did you see, like, a Harry Krishna midget in a tree floating? And uh, just some of the lines that Eddie Murphy says in this movie are like hysterical. And without these kind of lines, the film would all be all but lost. It would be so run of the mill. But thanks to Eddie Murphy and Charles Dance not taking his villain role that seriously and sort of hamming it up uh, completely, there's just a lot of fun here. But say so thanks to, like I say, the dialogue, the fantasy setting, and Eddie's Mur like Eddie Murphy's performance, the film is more more than saved, more than saved. Chana gets a tip off about the Yellow Dragon biker gang who took Cheryl and him and King Nan go to check out their hideout. Super funny scene where he's sneaking in and inadvertently intrudes on like a family's barbecue and he's like, I just want some chips. I just want some chips. And it just, the fact he's like, he's got a gun. They're looking at him like, what are you doing on our property? He's like, I just want, like, I don't want any trouble. I just want some chips. And then he yells at the guy to flip the burger over because it's burning. And it's just, it's a, so I'm not doing it justice, but it's just, um, it's just funny, funny stuff. So to show how cool these bikes are they have the, the band rat playing i'm not sure if any of you out there remember rat um um uh, I can't remember the song, but it's definitely rap playing. So King Nang um, was like, she. We learn she. We like she knows kung fu. She gets like, um, she gets wet by this water pipe at one point, and we do get some like cleavage, probably more than we should uh, in a family sort of orientated film. But yeah, there's um, some cleavage here. Um, turns out even Chana can fight a bit too, even doing like some punch combos and the odd kick uh, going on. But again, there's a kid. Six, seven years old, you're loving it. You're, I mean, at this point, I've not seen any Jackie Chans. I've not seen any Jet Lees at this point. So anything, like I say, especially films like Big Trouble and sort of this, I was just, I was loving that sort of, uh, you know, sort of kung fu type of vibe, even very early on in sort of films like this, even though, like I say, it's, you know, the choreography in it is completely and utterly dire. Um, but as a youngster, I was really, as I say, I was absolutely loving it. And so Cheryl was part of the gang's ranks and they sold her to Tommy Tong who needed her blood played by Peter Kwong he's the guy in big trouble so Chandler goes there and gets him to fight with Tommy at his restaurant and have to have King Nang doing some backflips so it's you know she has to do backflips for another reason that she's doing some backflips just so it's cool for the kids so Tommy escapes and Charles Dance appears in sort of rap form and kills him and King Nang tells Chandler that they are up against demons and I love how when Charles Dance communicates with his master we never see nor know who his master is but it's safe to assume it's either Satan or the devil or a you know, bad entity, a bad demon, whatever it is. But I love how we don't see that and I love how you just get this menacing voice. Um, you know how like sort of, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've seen the film Legend, Tim Curry and Tom Cruise, how like you hear the voice, you sort of get Get glimpses of Tim Curry, then at the end you get the full reveal. Here in the in this movie, like Charles Dance's master, it's all you never really know what he looks like. Um, you know, you get a reveal of what Charles Dance looks like, but like his master, who he answer, answers to, it's it's all up in the ether. Like you don't know, and I do like that. Let's say we he has this deep menacing voice. We don't need to know who his master is. Let's just say he's evil. So he tells Numswa, that's Charles Dance's character, by the way. I don't think I've mentioned that, but yeah, his name's Numswa. And to get the uh, Chanti dagger to kill the child, have to love that King Nang is always sleeping in her car. Not sure where she brushes her teeth or goes to the toilet um, either, but she sleeps in her car sort of outside Eddie Murphy's house. Numswa invades Chandler's dreams, which is a fun sequence, and says he will exchange the child for the dagger. They burn Chandler's arm, so when he wakes up, he knows it's not a dream. Dream. as i say the plot is such silly rubbish <laughs> and i love this movie 
But I say that with a term of endearment. It is such silly nonsense rubbish. Um, that it, but that to me is, but like I say, sometimes that's why I watch a movie. I want to escape, you know. I want to just zone into something. I don't. I want to forget if I've had a, if I've had a bad day. I just want a film that's easy going and light hearted. And Golden Child really sort of is that. But it's such a fun good time. So him and King Nang have to go to Tibet to get the dagger, and have to love if, um, like it's like he has to go to Tibet to get the dagger, and he's like, if I'm the chosen one. Why can't I go to the Bahamas? Like, why couldn't I go and get the dagger that's in its Bahamas? Why have I got to go to the bet? Um, Ki Nang and him sleep together. Love the flight to the bet too, with all the smoking, coughing, and the plane is packed. Even the stewardess, um, I think, has a cigarette on as well. And Chandler just looks so uncomfortable. Like, he just doesn't want to be doing this. But the whole, that's what I'm saying. He never embraces that whole chosen one mentality because the whole time he's sort of taking the mickey out of everything. He's like, sort of, what am I doing? Like, this is absolutely nuts. He doesn't want to be there the golden child gets transported and Chana and his psychic arrive in Kathmandu and he like follows a burge which leads him to Victor Wong's character who's also in big trouble in little China and love his character in this with him ripping Eddie off and then him calling him monkey breath and puke face funny even a scene later where him and Key are like sort of rowing a boat and Chana is still going on about the hundred he lost uh, to Victor Wong's character the film is really fast paced too I might add uh, so they get to the temple and Victor is there and he is like that's the dude who took my money and they want the chosen one to ask for the knife and only a man who's pure can wield it so naturally Chandler has to pass the test right you've got to have well he's got to prove his worth if he's the chosen one he's got to pass the test he's got to you know make show that he's up to the task and what he can do and where he's told he's got to hold a glass of water and not spill a drop and he's got to go into this sort of like cave um it makes me laugh when he drops a coin and he realises sort of there is no ground and the film sort of turns into sort of an Indiana Jones here for a bit and he's walking across these like beams and I love it, he's like I'm going to break your ass when he realises like no one has passed the test. He gets the knife and he's like turn on the goddamn lights. So now we learn Chandler wants to marry Ki Nang. The romance in this between the two leads is very forced. It's hugely, it's so forced. It's quick. It's not even, as I say, it's not, they're suddenly they're in love, they've slept together, they, and they're still ready, he's asking for sort of, and Victor Wong's sort of her dad, by the way. Um, I say, just, it, just the romance is so sort of, oh, they're in love now, you know, it's just in there. So Chandler, Chandler even returning to work for the special artifacts force to get through customs with the dagger, and I love him sing along to Nepalese like, radio on the flight home which is funny. So him and King Nang are sta staying, at, they're staying at like this guarded retreat when Numsar's men attack and the ending feels very rushed, like it just suddenly we're at the ending. Uh, King Nang fights them in her underwear and gets shot by one of Numsar's arrows. They get the knife and can't kill the child until dark. James Hong says you can save her. Oh, and Carla, the woman behind the screen, she's like this snake woman, by the way, who we see for all of two seconds. And I remember being a kid, that was what I wanted to see most. I was like, I want to see the reveal of this person behind this screen because you only see like a shadow. And you get the reveal and it's like this, like say, half woman, half snake sort of hybrid. But you, she's on screen for like two seconds and then that's the end of it. Budget, would, you know, the budget would only reach so far, right? So Chandler follows a bird, which takes him to their hideout. He gets the dagger back, and Nutzbar turns into a demon. And the ending to this movie, as I say, does feel very, very, very rushed. Like you thought, at least Dance and Murphy would have like, at least had one more line of memorable dialogue, because they were bouncing off each other really well up to this point. But unfortunately, at the end, the between Charles Dance and Eddie Murphy. It's just suddenly Charles Dance turns into this demon, and uh, that's the end of it. Um, it would have been nice if they just had one last bit of like witty dialogue between them. Nunspar gets crushed after Chana and the child go through this underground location together. The ground collapses and then Chana stabs him with the dagger. Golden Child saves King Nang, which is all done so easy. Like there is no danger at the end of the movie. Like, like I say, but it's so easy to watch. There's no peril ever, despite the, like they're going up against demons that are trying to take over the world. There's no peril. Ends with Ki Nang, the child, and Chandler walking off with him saying they should all go into show business because the golden child's got some abilities. But perfect, no. Perfect, not at all. But a very underrated, silly Eddie Murphy movie, which is great fun. I loved it back in the day. I've seen it countless amount of times since. I've watched it again recently for the purpose of this review. And I'll always love The Golden Child. You know, knock me if you will. Slate me if you will. But I think I think it's a vastly underrated Eddie movie. It's silly. It's stupid. But it's just so, so much 
damn fun. So if you've seen The Golden Child, you didn't rate it, make sure to go and check it out again, because I think people are a bit too harsh in this movie. It's stupid, yes, but check it out, and there's a lot of fun to be had. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. See you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.